by her confidence. <laughs> but what proof have I of their authenticity? I have carefully preserved the court guides of the period. They are open to your inspection, Lady Bracknell. I have known strangers in that publication. Miss Cardew's family solicitors are Messrs. Markby, Markby, and Markby. Markby, 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 and Markby. A firm of the oh, highest position oh, in their it's three Markbys, not four. Kind of Lady Bracknell. <laughs> I also have certificates of Miss Cardew's birth, <gasps> baptism, whooping cough, registration, vaccination, confirmation, and the measles, both the German and the English variety. <laughs> ah, a life crowded with insolence. <laughs> Though perhaps somewhat too exciting for a young girl. As a matter of form, Mr. Worthy, oh. I had better ask you if Miss Cardew has any little um, fortune. Oh, about a hundred thousand pounds in the fund, that is all. Goodbye, Lady Bracknell, so pleased to have seen you. <laughs> a moment, Mr. Worthy. A hundred and thirty thousand pounds. And in the fund, Miss Cardew. <coughs> I don't think that as things are now, it would be of much practical value to either of us, Dr. Charles. I am grieved to hear such sentiments from you, Mr. Worthing. I will return to the church at once. Indeed, I've just been informed that for the last hour and a half, Miss Prism has been waiting for me in the vestry. Prism, where is that baby? Lady Bracknell, I admit with shame that I do not know. In a moment of mental abstraction, for which I can never forgive myself, I deposited the manuscript in the bassinet and placed the baby in the handbag. Do not ask me, Mr. Worthing. I left it in the room of one of the larger railway stations in London. Victoria Station, right in line. Um. I'm not punctual myself, I know. But I do like punctuality in others. <laughs> and waiting, even to be married, is quite out of the question. Beg of you to reconsider your decision. But my dear Lady Bracknell, the matter is entirely in your hands. The moment you consent to my marriage with Gwendolyn, I will most gladly allow your nephew to form an alliance with my ward. You must be quite aware that what you propose is out of the question. <laughs> Yes, Lady Bracknell. I'm on my way there to join her. I must see her at once. Let her be sent for. Uh, she approaches. She is nigh. <laughs> I was told you expected me in the vestry, dear Canon. I've been waiting there for you for an hour and three quarters. Prism! <laughs> We gotta wrap it up. Curtain call calls. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Ten. So it is. I left it in the cloakroom of the Nick and Nick. What railway station? Victoria. The Brighton Line. I must retire to my room for a moment. Gwendolyn, wait here for me. If you are not too long, I shall wait for you here all my life. <laughs> Shit. The suspense is terrible. I hope it will last. <laughs> what's wrong? What's going on? Find out what's going on. Oh, 
What were you saying about the suspense? I said it was terrible, and I hope it will last. Ah, yes, I see. It is suspenseful. does not bode well. What's wrong? Where's the bag? What's wrong? The bag's not here. We need a bag right now. I'm going to props. Did I mention my friend Bunbury died today? Oh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, 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 nephew Algy, you did. You did mention that. He said the wittiest thing before he died. Uh. Uh, how did he put it? Thanks. Thanks. Thanks! He said that my wallpaper and I are fighting a duel to the death. One or the other of us has to go. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? I'm looking for a bag. This will serve. Um. Very amusing! Yes, just try to. Right now. <laughs> Is this the handbag, Miss Prism? The happiness of more than one life depends on your answer. The bag is undoubtedly mine. I'm delighted to have it returned to me so unexpectedly. It has been a great inconvenience to have been without it all these years. <laughs> was the baby you placed oh, in it. Jesus, Banks. Yes. Ah. Well, whatever it was, it seems to be working now. Well, seems like it. <clears throat> this is the woman who can tell you who you really are. 1869. Christian names. Ernest John. And Ernest. Stand by. Ernest. I knew from the first. You could have no other name. My own one. Sam, I have a call. On the contrary, Aunt Augusta, for the first time in my life, I finally realized the vital importance of being earnest. Blackout, go, sound, go. Curtain call, go. Gone five seconds all year. I was about to go into knock knock. The handbag was missing. I had to pause. And that spunt. What were you thinking with that bag? That Ernest was abducted that was by Ralph Cram. So <laughs> embarrassing. That wasn't even close to the right period, Dieter. Hey, Dieter, isn't that the bag? <laughs> Dieter, it was there the whole time. I swear it was missing. <sighs> you did this. Whatever, man. I was on stage the entire time. Yeah. For once, you can't pin this on me. <laughs> Whatever, it's there now. But will somebody get me out of this corset? My girls are begging to get out. Why don't I help you in the relative privacy of our dressing room? We'll do each other. Perhaps it was a ghost. Perhaps it was a ghost. Seriously? Why not? Well, why? Why would you make a prompt disappear? I mean, if you're immortal and all, why would you even bother screwing around with parlor tricks? Why not give your descendant stock advice? <laughs> you are so left-brained. I totally believe in the paranormal. For instance, space aliens have abducted my car keys. <laughs> or are they? Thank you. Driving to LA would have been a trick without those. Ooh, you're going to Los Angeles. Hollywood, here I come. <laughs> no more corset rolls for me. Is the trip imminent? Even closer than that. <laughs> I'm leaving tomorrow after we close. Which means I gotta get busy on my hangover, right? Where is our server? Was she taken by ghosts too? <laughs> <laughs>
Things were truly tubercular tonight. <laughs> like a hospital ward. Did you hear that wheezing in Section D? I mean, it was so distracting. I was very concerned for the poor man's health. I swear I thought he was choking. I thought, my God, somebody Heimlich this guy. Oh, thank God he didn't kick it. <laughs> Death is such a hard act to follow. We just spent all evening with them. Can't we just go home? Come on, we'll just get one drink. Besides, you'll be too tired after strike tomorrow. Austin's looking for us. No, he's looking for you. We have wine at home. I want to get an early start at the bridal fair tomorrow. Another bridal fair? Great. What? I said great. Well, tomorrow we put our dear old Ernest to rest. A toast to Ernest. <laughs> to Ernest. Oh, and to Oscar, the original playwright gone wild. <laughs> <laughs> Requiem Scott in Pache. To Oscar. To Oscar. <laughs> to Oscar. <laughs> the trouble with theater is worse. Mark B, Mark B, Mark B. A horse could count better than that. A friggin' horse. Of course. They get all the credit. Well, we do everything to make them look good, sound good. Mm -hmm. Two of their friggin' entrances and exits. Find their friggin' props. <laughs> they couldn't find their flabby asses with both hands and a flashlight if it weren't for us. Yeah. Not to mention a prop as big as their head. What thanks do we get for it? None. Nada. Yeah, we're invisible. A toast to the invisible. Huh. I still say, if it was a ghost, why take that bag and why tonight? Well, to paraphrase our dear friend Pascal, ghosts have reasons of which reason knows not. Well put. Right. I mean, we can't apply human logic to the spirits. They don't play by our rules. Perhaps one of us drew them out. There are some people who have more affinity to the departed. I'm starting to think that our server has departed. Excuse me a sec. <laughs> well, while all that does sound very interesting, I, mind itself, have never experienced anything that could be considered vaguely ghostly. No spooks, no specters, no ectoplasm. I'd like to sometime. Be careful what you wish for. Why can't you change with everyone else? Because I'm not an exhibitionist, like some people. Oh, you see in Austin, really. I mean, you're such opposites. You're so honest and trustworthy, and he is such a player. You never know what he's up to. Maybe it's a case of opposites attract. Whatever. Hey, why are you guys up here instead of sitting with us? Don, here's a little secret for you. Oh. If you're ordering food and you sit at the bar, Food comes faster. So where's your food? Oh, I ate before the show. What can I get you? Uh, Jameson on the rocks, please. Rocks? Straight up. Thank you. Uh, barkeep, while you're in the neighborhood, I will have one more of these. Yeah. Thank you. Well, God knows when she'll be back. No. No, I'm serious. I would totally love to see a ghost, you know, just once. Has anyone ever seen one before? Never have. Although I used to work at these caves that everybody said was haunted, and I didn't believe it for a second, but no way I was going in there alone. Well, I'm of the considered opinion that the things which truly haunt us are of our own devising. A way to bring us down, Scott. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, as Don has pointed out, I am a left-brainer, so I propose we put the theory to a test. 
Why don't we spend the night in the theater and watch for these ghosts? For God's sake, tell him to give it a rest. You have to admire the persistence. Ghosts aren't <laughs> toys to be played with. If they don't want to play, then what are they doing in a theater? Come, Lady Bracknell and Aunt Augusta. <laughs> if your theory is correct, then they themselves have started it. Mm. Perchance, they would like to have an audience themselves. Mm. Well, I'm as skeptical as anyone, but um, if everyone's going, Well, it's been a long time since I've succumbed to peer pressure, but sure. Oh, all right. If you're all going to stay, I'll stay. You'll need someone to look out for you. <laughs> oh, we don't need you to look out for us. Oh, no, not for you. I meant for the spirits. Here, let me check with Dieter. And Evie. I can safely predict that Evie's not going to be interested. already on our way home and we can't come to the bar. Change in plans. Now they're heading back to spend the night in the theater. Watch for ghosts. Ew. That just sounds icky. Imagine all the creepy crawlies that come out when the lights go out. You want to go, don't you? Stay there overnight? Yes, it'll be like ghost hunters without the assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds intriguing. <laughs> all right, I'm going to be up all night anyway, so uh, yeah, might as well do it crowd. Do it. Do it. Why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> They're in. How about Dieter and Evie? Evie? Whatever. Uh, we're negotiating the terms for that right now. No, you're right. You wouldn't have any fun. But I'd like to go. God. You'd think Austin was afraid to be in the dark without you. Well, something like that. Look, you go home. Go to sleep. I promise I'll be home in time to take you out to breakfast. And the bridal fair? And the bridal fair. All right. Just be careful where you sleep. I don't want you to bring home any cooties. No cooties, I promise. I suppose you deserve one last fling. Maybe I do. So, they're gonna camp out at the theater all night and watch for ghosts. That's their big plan. Oh, that sounds like fun. So wrong. It's probably Diane's idea. Of course. <laughs> what I mean. Should we report him? <laughs> I'll report him. I'll report him all right. Yeah, we gotta mean anything. What are you grinning at? Well, you know how the old saying goes, uh, be careful what you wish for. What do you mean? What is a ghost anyway but a trick of the light? A little creaking here and there? You mean? Yeah. What if we put on a show for them for a change? So, what's the plan? Well, there are three floors, so we'll split into three groups. Scott, you and, and Amy will take the third floor, the costume storage. Diane, mm -hmm. you, John, and Jim will take the main floor, the stage area. Okay. And the rest of us will get down downstairs. Oh, no, see? I don't see much potential in this room. I feel like the color palette alone would drive away most ghosts. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of the, the pea soup in The Exorcist. Mm -mm, no, that was more of a mint green. Sorry. <laughs> Here I am. Where's Evie? Evie? Evie. She decided not to come. But she's here in spirit, and a phone call away. <laughs> Hi. Yes? 
I'm in the green room. With Austin and a few other people. A few other people. Okay, sure. What's a serif? Okay. Okay, serif. Sans serif. That's it? Mm hmm. Me too. Bye. <laughs> Was that Evie? Evie. Evie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's working on the wedding invitations. Just wanted my opinion on the typography. Oh, and when is the date of this alleged wedding? Well, we haven't set a date. Yet. <laughs> kind of makes it hard to print the invitations now, doesn't it? Yeah. Evie thinks we can save money doing things we can do on our own. Oh, kind of the Martha Stewart type, huh? But she hasn't done time yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, when I got married, we didn't even have witnesses, let alone invitations. You were You're married? married? Yeah, once. For like 15 minutes. That was really young. Hey, what's through there? Hear anything? Shh, shh, shh. Someone's very close. Quiet, Gilbert! All right, I'll go first. Then I'll go in and I'll open the rehearsal door upstairs. It's a straight shot to the attic. Just don't let them know you're there, or I'll screw it up. You got it? All right, we'll wait here. Lovely. You understand how to play, right? Forming words. What could be so hard? Well, the first word has to intersect with the cute little pink star. Uh, not you. Uh, <laughs> this one in the center. <laughs> and then you go horizontally or vertically. Either way, whichever feels right. All right. Got it. All right. Here we go. I'm ready. Have at it. Okay. Okay. We are. All right. Here we go. We're off. Ready as well. <laughs> Any word. Oh! Oh! Oh, dear. Oh. oh, no, I lost one. I got it. Mm -hmm. got I found it. it. Okay. I got it. All right. <clears throat> Oops, upside down. All right. One, two, four, five, six, seven. I got it. All right. All right. All right. We are rolling. Though I've belted ya and flayed ya by the living God that made ya, you're a better man than I, Gunja Din. Cucumber sandwich? No thanks, that stuff makes me crazy. Oh, all right. Do you think there's anything, you know, beyond this? Sure. Equity. There's, a, there's a, a smell to costumes. Have you noticed a, an un, unpleasant smell? Sweat, fear. And here, it's uh, magnified. I'll have to take your word for it. I have no sense of smell. Really? Car accident. <laughs> Consider yourself lucky in this instance. So do you, you enjoy playing Miss Prism? Well, yes and no. I mean, I always like having a part, but she's 
such a wistful character and I get tired of playing wistful. I mean, full of whist. What is that anyway? Whist. I think that's like four sevenths of wistful. Anyway, uh, I, I, I think you're wonderful in the show. Thank you. A lot of people would have followed up what I just said with something like, oh, I think you're wonderful too. I know. I, I, I thought about saying that and then I waited too long. I didn't think of it quite fast enough and I thought it would have sounded like a cliche. I didn't want it to sound like an empty compliment. I, I welcome those too. Yeah. I love your consonants. <laughs> what? A person could live their whole life listening to your consonants. Well, it'd be a pretty, pretty dull life. Oh, Jesus, Tears! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, great. Anybody else got a weird feeling about this? Like we're trespassing or something? We are trespassing. What's your point? Locked. Is that one locked? No, it just sticks a little. Well, they usually have like a key or something up here. Oh! Oh, look at my dress! It's better my dress! Get it out! Oh, get it out! Get it out! Get it out! Ooh, that's keeper. Ouch. Watch your step. Oh my god. Look at all this shit. Yeah. Looks like Craig hurled up his entire list. <laughs> yeah, shh, just use these to talk. Yeah. Right? Tonight's performance is brought to you by Mark B. Mark B. Mark B. and Mark B. I'm getting a lot of static. That's typical. Try another channel. There's our little ghost hunter now. <laughs> Joel. Yes, ma'am. Do you remember that flying bat projection you did for Dracula? Do you think you could set up a ghost version from up here? Running it through the trap? Yes. Well, we got a strobe light, a fogger and a mirror to bounce an image off of, plus no shortage of scary looking shit. Yeah. So I'd say hell yes. Not to mention Gilbert can dial up some wicked scary sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> and someone's got the giggles. Did you see that? See what? I thought I saw something. Oh, Kelly, don't worry, it's probably just a rat. Well, come on, let's get started. What do you think? Eh, if I was a ghost, I'd crash here. Mm. Now, if only we could find a place to sit. <laughs> you okay with this room, Dieter? The feng shui work for you and all? I still think we should do this in the green room. There's sofas in the green room. There are sofas in here. And an ottoman. Nothing like a good hard ottoman. <laughs> Hello? Hi. Yes, in the basement. Um, plum, mustard. With a lead pipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Me too. Bye. Cumberbuns. Damn it! Oh. My money was on tablecloths. What's the over-under on cumberbuns? My turn? Mm -hmm. Check this out. Not done. Not done. No, done. done. <laughs> Not so fast. If I couldn't put down grr earlier, you cannot put down burr now. Oh, but I can, because burr is actually a word that you can find in the dictionary, whereas grr is not a word that you can find in the dictionary. 
Well, that's easy to say when there isn't any dictionary. That is true. Mm -hmm. Ooh, sounds like you are challenging Jim. Well, mm -hmm. I think I am. Hmm. Well, then I think we're going to need a dictionary. There's probably one in props. Uh, 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 uh. It's my challenge. I'll get the dictionary. Okay. Would you like some company, or do you wish to go alone? Oh, I won't be alone. <laughs> Where the hell is she going? Relax. She'll be back. And we'll be ready for her. Ah, uh, she is fun. A little loopy, but fun. Maybe uh, you want to think about... I need a refill. Daddy's run dry. I think you're going to have a hard time finding a place at this hour. Oh, places I go, never close. Come on, Scout. speak. What? Please do not to speak. We may be observed. <laughs> you cannot to be looking at me. Uh, they may be watching. They are always watching. That is what they do, the watchers. They watch. Do you have the watch? I have the watch. They watch the watch. We must watch out. You are very interesting, comrade. Very interesting. Watch it. They are watching us. What? What? We're afraid to talk. Because the instant we do, your, your phone. phone is bound to... <laughs> Hi. Oh, I know what we're missing. Yeah. Okay, you guys yeah. set up um, like a table and some seating for us. A table? Yeah, you know, something small, tasteful. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, is that okay? Don just leaves? I don't know. Should we ask Evie? Mouse. No, no. I came down here to look for a dictionary for our uh, Scrabble game, and I saw these photo albums and got lost in the past. Say, how many times do you think this theater has done our town in its 50-year history? I don't know. Five. Fifteen. Fifteen times. Ooh, that's a lot of Grover's Corners. Yes. <laughs> how many Ernests? Oddly enough, only twice. However... This may have something to do with it. Somebody died during the play? Well, not during a performance. The young man playing Algernon died in an accident on the closing weekend of the play. No one would go into his role, so they closed it a night early. Ooh, maybe that is why the handbag disappeared tonight. Maybe it is. Hmm. Oh, yes. Eh, Deutsch. <laughs> Have you experienced anything out of the ordinary tonight? No, not a peep. 
Just the spiders. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Except, I think this <gasps> might liven things up oh, a little bit. Oh, no. Ouija board. <laughs> no, 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 no. Definitely not. Why not? Uh, it's, it's, it's just too... Uh, Provocative. I mean, it's like wearing a tight sweater to the dance. It tends to bring out the wrong element. No. All right. Mm, fine. What about Dawn? What about her? Even you have to be aware that she's into you. Why? Because she's not into you. Can't you feel a vibe? Yeah, maybe. A little? A little? You would have to be blind not to see it. Playful flirtation, body language, eye contact, it's the holy trinity. Trust me, as a man who knows, these sorts of opportunities don't come by every day. Just saying. What, what are we looking for in there? Looking for my next drink. It, it, it's locked. Not for long. I hope you win at Scrabble. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> and I hope you thrive in Hollywood. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm probably nuts for thinking that I can cross over from stage to film, but you gotta follow your dream. <laughs> I had a dream, which was not all a dream. The bright sun was extinguished, and the stars did wander darkling in the eternal space, rayless and pathless. And the icy earth swung blind and blackening in the moonless air. Lord Byron. Oh, thank God. I thought you were doing Martin Luther King on acid or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lord Byron didn't write that about L.A., of course. But I find it an apt description. Oh, you've tried it. Oh, I have tried it. A long time ago. It clearly wasn't for me. Clearly. Well. It's a rough town, mm -hmm. you know. At least you gave it a shot. I did, I did do that. My friend Harold, he said, you always have to have four angels to be a success in Hollywood. And I had my four angels, but it wasn't enough to keep me there. <laughs> well, we had better both be getting back to our respective posts. Oh yes, quite. <laughs> you know, actually, you go ahead, I'm gonna poke around here a little bit more. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Gilbert, I think that one's a keeper. We all have to listen to those scary sound effects. A little <laughs> rattled up here as it is. No, don't be such a wimp. The only thing scary up here is us. <laughs> hey, Kelly, can you find me a wrench? I think there's one in that tool bag over there. Besides which, it smells funny up here. Like... Syrup. You smell syrup? Yeah, kinda. Huh. Nothing. What? Oh. oh, it just reminds me of this old story I heard about this place, that's all. Tell me, come on. Well, you know this wasn't always a theater, right? It used to be Ball Bunyan's Flapjack Junction. Really? Yep. Real Northwoodsy Minnesota restaurant type place. Lumberjack shit all over the walls. It was a real popular place too. Right up until they shut it down. Why'd they shut it down? Oh, I don't know. Probably because of the murder. What? Yep. See, the owner, his name was Mark. But everybody called him Flapjack. And he had this bodacious girlfriend. She waited tables here. And he was crazy jealous of her. Got so jealous of her, he decides to marry her. Like, that's gonna fix things, right? 
That just made everything worse. And they held the reception here in this building. You know how everybody always wants to kiss the bride? Well, I guess this one dude got a little carried away, shoved his tongue down her throat, just as a joke. And Mark completely flips out, and picks Paul Bunyan's hatchet right out of his hand, and starts hacking away at the guy and his bride too. You know, wham! Right to the side of the head. And the cops busted in just as he was lining up his second swing. Oh my God. Yeah. Anyway, they say his ghost still hangs out up here. It smells like syrup. But you stick with me. Huh? I'll protect you. Ashley, at last you have returned from battle. Lady, clearly one of us is in the wrong war. Fiddle dee dee. Get a hurry on there, Jim. Them geese is a biting. Or whatever. Homer, we need to talk. Jim, I am strangely aroused. Scott, it's time. <laughs> Hurry up, Betty Sue, we're gonna miss the big game. Screw the big game. Oh! All right, let's see how we did. Sweet. Here, you can put these away. that was missing from backstage. That's the bag. Don't be ridiculous. Is that strobe working? Yeah, perfectly. Up to a point. I'm gonna need that wrench again. Mm. Thanks, paranoid pothead. Welcome, dickwad. The lock has not been built that can hold him. Did you leave something in here? No, but I'm betting someone else did. You know, the thing I learned when I started drinking, I mean, seriously drinking, is that not all drinkers drink alike, but all drinkers think alike. At least the ones who are any good at it. Yeah, it's kind of like the uh, hundredth monkey theory. The hundredth monkey? Yeah. When a critical number in a population, like a hundred monkeys, uh, achieves a certain level of knowledge, then uh, suddenly and instantly, everyone in that species shares that same knowledge. I think drinkers are the same way. When one of them knows where they hid some booze, the rest of us monkeys know where to look. Yeah, not much meat on her. Oh, hmm. but what is here is choice. Our work here is done. Good assist. Yeah, leave it. Just let's go. Well, I'll be darned. Burr is a word, and gur is a. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so what do you know? Uh, uh, yes, take those ones. Mm. Okay. You know, I'm feeling worried about that young lady. Which one? Oh, Dawn. No, I think of all the young ladies I have met in my life, mm -hmm. Dawn is the one that I would worry about the least. <laughs> she could take care of herself. So Are we I ready? <laughs> well, strobe's ready to roll. Your turn, Skippy. There's juice in the fogger ready to fire up. The speakers are in place. Now all we need is like some filmy fabric to play the ghost. There's no scrim, nothing. I looked everywhere. I just need a something white to dangle. Even a hanky would work. A clean hanky? Or maybe a veil? 
Or how about a wedding dress? What? There is no wedding dress in here. Well, there's the costumes. Kelly, go into costumes and put on a wedding dress. You'll be our ghost. Me? Act? I don't know the part. <laughs> Isn't that an actor's worst nightmare? There is no part. All you do is stand around like a zombie, wave your arms like a moron, like you always do. But I can't. Aren't there people in costume storage? No, nah, just actors. And Kelly, if there's one thing you've always excelled at, it's slipping around unnoticed. Let's go. Come. So, Dawn is talking about going to L.A., mm. and I'm mm. not sure it feels right. Not right for her or not right for you? Oh, it absolutely wasn't right for me. Of course, I had to get into the thick of it to find that out. It's a whole different world. But then, of course, there are some people who can just jump right in there and do it. But it wasn't me. Do you ever regret leaving all that? Seemed like a big deal at the time, but no, no regrets. You know, I almost went to L.A. in the day. You know, I sort of tried to figure it all out, sort of mapped out my career trajectory and everything. Well, you would have been great. Why didn't you go? Why? Oh, uh, I killed someone. Everybody settled? <laughs> have you settled, Dieter? I'm okay. Okay, let's begin. <laughs> oh, spirits, we beckon you. I don't know, but thank God it wasn't your ringtone. Are there any spirits in this room? <laughs> oh, good. We got a smart ass. I'll take that as a yes. Are you a male or a female spirit? What are the odds of getting a hermaphrodite at a first try? Anything else? I don't know. I, I think it's pretty clear. Talk about dark. I can't even see my hand touching my face. Uh, that is not your face. Sorry. Don't panic. I have a flashlight. <laughs> Where? Right here on my key ring. Oh, hold on. There's a flashlight. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh good. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to call Jim, see if they have power upstairs. You've reached Dieter's voicemail. No idea how to use my phone, so I'm probably sitting right next to it. No, power's on up here. Huh, nothing out of the ordinary. Why? Right out. And we're back. 
Jim says they have power upstairs. Weird. We must have blown a fuse. Yeah, I hope that's all it was. You know, that we didn't inadvertently release some heinous spirit. You know, some crazed, half-mad creature bent on revenge. <laughs> You... Yes. Killed someone? Yes. Manslaughter. I was at an audition. Long time ago. Lifetime ago. Literally. I was, uh, I was up for this really big part. You know, career starter, national tour, ending up on Broadway. And I nailed it. I mean, I effing nailed it. I, mean, I knew it, everyone in the room knew it. As a matter of fact, they offered me the part right on the spot. I said, sure, no trouble, call my agent, blah, blah, blah. And I went out the door and I was on cloud nine. Walked straight across the street, slam back, shot a wild turkey to celebrate, hopped in my car, backed out of my parking spot and ran over an intern. College kid, making three bucks an hour in credits. Dwayne L. Russell. Mm. I'd seen him at the audition. A geeky kid wearing glasses and carrying a clipboard. Oh. Dwayne L. Russell, age 21, which coincidentally was the number of months I was in jail. When you reverse that, you get 12, which is the number of years that I was on parole. Now, uh, admittedly, 12 years is a long time to be on parole, but I had the ability to kind of stretch that out thanks to a, a DWI and uh, disturbing the peace, brandishing a weapon, so on, so forth. Ooh, smooth. I gotta take a pee <clears throat> or something. Oh, there's a fuse box upstairs in the booth. Here, you guys just, just wait here. Wait, wait, take Tinkerbell with you. With the little light, your little light. Oh, thanks. Well, that was lucky. I, I, I mean that your transporter beam was able to grab me just before that bullet struck the back of my head. Yes. We had to break several galactic and intergalactic laws just to get to you in time. Not to mention the Prime Directive, but we felt that the situation warranted it. Of course, now I'll never know how that play ended. Mr. President, we need your help. My help? Yes, we need you to launch a space invasion against the vicious and rude Rudamites. Oh, the Rudamites, you say? Yes, they hail from the planet Rudy. They have formed an army. The Rudimentary? Yes, that's exactly right, Mr. President. And I don't think I need to tell you that they don't fight fair. Can you help us win this battle? Well, I, I don't know, little lady. I only got Civil War experience. Did you hear that? You mean you, mean you saying, did I hear that? No, I mean that rustling. Oh. Uh, no. Well, in that case, I fear that we have mice. Oh, oh, good heavens. I must say, I disdain mice. Oh, my dear lady, I'm sure it wasn't mice. Well, what else would it be? Um, mayhaps a vole. A vole. A vole. Isn't that rather like a mouse? Oh, nothing of the sort. Completely different. A vole is, is a pet. You can buy a vole. You can buy a vole, you say? Indubitably. Might I ask, where did you come upon that rather arcane knowledge? I had a vole in Inja. 
I had a role in Indra. Uh, Reginald. Mm. Uh, we called him Reggie. Reggie the Vole. Uh, damn solid chap, even if he was a Vole. I dare say that is fascinating. Come sit. You don't mind, do you? I have RLS. OMG. <laughs> Restless leg syndrome. So I'm wearing corsets in these period shows. It just wreaks havoc on my body. Go oh, and the shoes. Oh, there's no way I could have made it in the Victorian era. All of that hypocritical surface morality and the extensive porno collections. <laughs> you probably would have done really well with the Victorians. What makes you say that? Do you think I have an extensive porn collection? <laughs> no, and if you did, Evie would have made you throw it out long ago. I just mean, you seem like one of those guys who does much better with rules and structure and morality and monogamy and monotony. I have a wild side. <laughs> and congratulations. Very good at hiding it. That should mask the speaker better. Oh, I should probably cut that wire. It's gonna get caught. Joel, I need you to come here. Bring the cutter. Say that's a bit of overkill, wouldn't you? I had no idea about Jim and all that. Did you? Yeah. And I was around when it happened. Actually, my uh, uh, partner, Steve, was a customer on that show. Oh, oh. Steve. Yeah. Your partner. Yeah. How long has he been? Uh... Oh, a couple of years. Yeah, almost, uh, mm -hmm. almost two. How long were you together? 28 years. <gasps> oh, my. Next uh, month, we would have celebrated our 30th anniversary. Mm. Say, um, I've been wanting to tell you that I love what you are doing with Lady Bracknell. Why, oh. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I uh, actually auditioned for that part uh, <laughs> because sometimes they do cast it with a male. Oh, oh males, um, that's true. Not this time, but uh, probably just as well. Um, <laughs> I mean, because you're wonderful. Uh. Uh, and it might have been too much to bite off, you know, me being away from the theater for so long. Mm. But that's always been my uh, my dream to play that role, so maybe someday. <laughs> Steve uh, always used to say, you're too young. There'll be plenty of time for that later. <laughs> <laughs> I still talk to Steve sometimes. I suppose that's weird. Oh, no. You know, 28 years is a long time to know somebody. You get to know their rhythms, their reactions, and uh, what they're going to say in pretty much any situation. And uh, so the conversation continues. It's funny, though. You know, now when I hear his voice, there's something about the quality that I just can't get right. So you know, I start to wonder if it's really his voice at all. Oh, it is his voice. 
I want that to be true. It's true. It's true. Oh, my allergies. <laughs> Somebody must be kicking up some dust somewhere. <laughs> Maybe it's the sputids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now it's time for me to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Tell me again, doctor, what the light is for. It helps detect post-retinal visual anomalies. Doctor, I am realizing that I did not notice any diplomas on the wall when I came in. We stare into the light. And we look away and shut our eyes. And then we describe what we see. Oh, nein, nein, Liebchen. It is very interesting. Uh. Very Okay, doctor. Now I am blinded. What now? Look away. And close your eyes. And um, give me your hand. Doctor, I am sorry if my hand is sweaty. Why is your hand sweaty? Because I am nervous. Because I am doctor? Or perhaps because you are not. Are your eyes still closed? Yeah. What do you see? The after image of the light, and it is moving. Point to where it is. Right about there. That is exactly where mine is too. And it is moving. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh. I need to see my chiropractor soon. I am a mess. Do you want me to rub your neck? Jesus, yes. How many hints does it take? You have to spray paint it on the wall for you. Back rub. <laughs> okay. Get in there. Oh, I am convinced that this is why people get into the theater. Yeah, it's not for the recognition. It's not for the art. It's not for the attention. It's just the people <laughs> with no personal boundaries willing to give you back rubs. I think I read that in Sanford Meisner's book. Yeah, laugh if you want to, but it is a very thin line between group theater and grope theater. Kelly. Kelly, come in. How could you be out of range? What is it, Gilbert? What's the matter? How's this feel? Oh. Like I need to leave $20 on the nightstand. <laughs> Don't you ever think about just going for it? What? Taking your shot. My shot? Going to LA. Oh, Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah I used to think about it all the time. Mm -hmm. What makes you stop thinking about it? I was starting to worry about that poor girl. I can let it go to voice now. <laughs> what have you done with the real Dieter? <laughs> this is the real Dieter. Whoa! What the hell are you doing? What do you mean? I thought that's what you wanted. <laughs> Look, no offense, buddy, but why would I want your tongue in my mouth? It's weird enough having mine in there. The looks, the touching, the, the texting. The texting? The text? What? I didn't text you. I... Hey, sweetie, let's spend the night together. Smiley face? No, not me. I don't use emoticons. Where's my phone? Austin. Austin. Uh, Muriel, something tells me we should get the hell out of here. What do you mean? Just listen to this. 
Cool sound effect, Gilbert. Yeah, that's not a sound effect. That's it. We're out of here. What? Are shitting me? Muriel in. Oh, get a hurry on up there, little lady. Minister is a waiting. What's that, honey pie? I said, I said the minister is a waiting. Well, now we don't want to keep that minister a waiting, do we? Oh, heck no. You like my bolo? I do like that bolo. Oh. Oh. Muriel. Oh, thank God. Kelly, you need to come over here and let us out. We're locked in a friggin' attic. Kelly, good to hear from you. Did you get the dress, dear? Yes, I have it on, but... I have to be. What the hell are you talking about? I said we're trapped in the attic. You need to let us out. Oh, that's too bad. I can't help it. Can't help what? <laughs> Kelly, you half-witted moron. You need to get your tush over here and let us the hell out. Oh, you silly girl. Well, hurry up. And don't... I know, don't let them see me. Just when you think she can't get any stupid... How tough can it be to come over here and open the door? And he said, let there be light. That little bastard. Austin, is everything all right? Jim said you lost power downstairs. Do you think it was a manifestation? <laughs> I think it was a blown fuse. Uh, well, I wonder what I'll find upstairs. It's gotten Amy. I thought there's any action going on up there. Oh, that's right. They're up there, aren't they? Such sweet, quiet people. I'll see how they're doing. As you all know, Amaryllis here and myself, we wrote our own vows for this here ceremony. That's right, we did. All by our notes. Hello, <laughs> hello. Don't mind me, I won't be a minute. Now, let's see, what am I looking for? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm, I just need to find... <laughs>
Jesus pigs. <laughs> This will do nicely. <laughs> oh, anything unnatural yet? What? See anything supernatural? Uh, not yet. Ah, uh, as you were. <laughs> you both look lovely, by the way. And that would be great, thank you. Wait a minute, what are you doing here? Oh, Dieter and Dawn needed some time alone. Dieter, oh my gosh, I forgot. We we're going to need Dieter. First help me with those things, and then you can really help me by sending Dieter up to the stage. See any dead people? Not yet. Uh, Dieter, Diane wants you upstairs for something. What is it? I'm literally without a clue. She said that we can go along if we want to. I think that we, you and me, could use a minute alone. Come sit. I don't bite. Hard. And now, I have some questions to ask you, Mr. Worthing. You can take a seat. Thank you, Lady Bracknell. I prefer standing. I feel bound to tell you that you are not down on my list of eligible young men. But I am quite ready to enter your name, should you give the kinds of answers a really affectionate mother requires. Do you smoke? Well, yes, I must admit I smoke. I'm very happy to hear it. A man should always have an occupation of some kind. I feel very strongly that a man that wishes to get married should know either everything or nothing. Which do you know? I know nothing, Lady Bracknell. I'm very happy to hear of it. Ignorance is like a delicate, exotic fruit. Touch it, and the bloom is gone. Is everything all right with Dieter? I think so. I'm more concerned about you, Austin. <laughs> Me? <laughs> I'm okay. Are you sure? Because it seems to me that someone that would deliberately mislead a friend and have them throw their future away for a one-night stand with a girl he hardly knows is, how would my mom put it, a sick son of a bitch. Oh, your mom sounds like a very what interesting... What were you thinking, Austin? 
He is your best friend. And he's engaged. Well, maybe he shouldn't be. Engaged, that is. Well, that is for him and Evie to decide. It's heavy. But Evie's cool, too. How dare you manipulate him like that? And use me as bait. How dare you? What kind of person do you think that I am? You're right, I'm... I'm sorry it was stupid. I am sorry. This is my sincere face. Yeah, I believe you. You're not that good of an actor. <laughs> Ow. Oh, how am I ever gonna make it in LA if I let something like this crack me up? Oh, I gotta get a thicker skin. Maybe Diane can give you some pointers from her experience. <laughs> Thanks, but I don't think that Diane's Hollywood cameo is going to be particularly instructive. I would hardly call it a cameo. What do you mean? I thought she was there for like 30 seconds or something. Oh, you need to bone up on your Hollywood lore, my friend. <laughs> you know, this couch folds out. You'd probably be more comfortable. I don't want to be comfortable. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. You know, your problem is you just don't want to go home. Jim Brooks created no, Comedy for Rent for friend. Diane. Harold the Ramis directed it. I had the same problem right She after shot the I pilot divorced. and it was a huge success, memories but then she just loud. walked away. Right? The memories are too loud? <laughs> what am I talking to Rod McEwen all of a sudden? I'm concerned, that's all. You don't have to be. Well, I remember when Ted and I split up. It took me a long Why time to learn to deal with my anger and my hurt. What did you do in the meantime? I tried to work it out constructively. I wrote, I exercised, I banned all these golf clubs at a little wire sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> I would strongly urge you, Mr. Worthing, to make a definite effort to produce, at any rate, at least one parent of either sex before the season is quite over. Well, I don't see how I could possibly manage to do that. I can produce the handbag at any moment. It is in my dressing room at home. I really think that should satisfy you, Lady Bracknell. Me, sir? What has this to do with me? You can hardly imagine that I and Lord Bracknell would have a dream of allowing our only daughter, a girl who has been raised with utmost care, to marry into a cloakroom and form an alliance with a parcel. Good morning, Mr. Worthing. Before we say I do, I have a special little treat for my special little lady. You do now? Uh, yes, ma'am. I wrote a little tune about you and, and well, about me. I sure did. I, I wrote it the very first night we met, which seems like tonight. You and me, you and me, why don't we fall? You and me, you and me, why don't we fall in love? You want a ring, you want a vow, you want a ten-piece band, you want a cake, you want champagne, or do you just want a man? Why don't we? Please. 
your bitching and take it like a man. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Guess who's driving Don to LA? Yeah, but we're not having sex. No, we're not having the sex. Oh, God, right there. Oh, oh. Does anyone hear pounding? Lower, lower, oh yeah, oh. I was in this play here before. I know. I saw the picture. You were Cecily. And he was Algernon. He was. Mm -hmm. We love to do plays together. We love to play. <laughs> and then there was the car crash, and he's gone. Oh, dear. They're never really gone. Not really. They're all around us. You just have to see them. They come to remember, to partake, to forgive, and to say goodbye. If you close your eyes, you might even be able to hear your Algernon. Cecily, I shall not offend you if I state quite frankly and openly that you seem to me to be in every way the visible personification of absolute perfection. <sighs> Ever since I first looked upon your wonderful and incomparable beauty, I have dared to love you wildly, passionately, devotedly, hopelessly. I don't think that you should tell me that you love me wildly, passionately, devotedly, and hopelessly. Hopelessly doesn't seem to fit, does it? I thought you were with Uncle Jack. He's gone to order the dog cart for me. He's going to send me away. Then have we got to part? I'm afraid so. It's a very painful parting. It is always painful to part from people whom one has known for a very brief space of time. The absence of old friends one can endure with equanimity. But even a momentary separation from anyone to whom one has just been introduced, it is almost unbearable. What a perfect angel you are, Cecily. You saw ghosts? I'm there, I'm there. Yes. yes. No, on the stage. From the stage. We're on the stage. They're everywhere. Ghosts? Yes, I was on the stage. And I was looking for you. And I heard this voice say, Kill Evie. Kill Evie. And I looked up. And there was this head floating above me. And it was oh, Honey. <laughs> Did you finish that five buck chuck tonight? Sometimes. Trust me. I love you, Dieter. I love you too, Evie. What now? It's bad luck for you to see that dress before the wedding. It's alright, we'll, we'll 
get you a new dress. <gasps> really? Do it! That's easy for you to say. Stage managers make more than lightboard operators. What? So I'll pay for that or just do it. Right, right, right. I don't know, it just feels like this is gonna make it worse. <sighs> Restaurant, you know, the one who got. Do you remember our wedding day? How it rained? I think you have me mistaken for someone else. That... Well, the first day we met, and that funny old man with the glasses. Yeah, yeah, I had really lots of reminisce, but we gotta break down this door now! Or the night you. Thank you, Steve. I thought it came out very well, too. You are too much alone, Dr. Charles Abouf. You should be married. A misanthrope I can understand, but a womanthrope, never. Um, I, I, I didn't. By persistently remaining single, a man converts himself into a permanent public temptation. Men should be more careful. Such celibacy leads weaker vessels astray. But um, is a man not equally attractive when married? A man is never attractive, except to his own wife. And often I've been told not even to her. That depends upon the intellectual sympathies of the woman. Maturity can be depended on. Ripeness can be trusted. Were I fortunate enough to be Miss Prism's pupil, I would hang upon her lips. Reverend Charles I, I was speaking metaphorically. Oh. My metaphor was drawn from these. Well, if nothing else, you learned how to play Scrabble. Oh, I was just having fun with you. Oh. I've always known how to play Scrabble. Oh. I used to play in Scrabble tournaments. No shit. <laughs> I think we've done all we can do for one night. Can we give you a hand? Austin, that would be wonderful. Who won? Here, if you would take these to costumes. Sure. Thank you. Oh, and Dawn, if you would take these things back to props. Okay. And Dawn, if you would be so kind, I'd like to make a little contribution to uh, props myself. Tournaments? Take off your eyeshadow. No, I didn't. <laughs> I will put this away tomorrow. Yeah, they're busy up there, so this can probably wait as well. Yeah, I'll kill the lights. Don, 
When you get to L.A., here are the names and phone numbers of a couple of my friends. I will let them know where you'll call. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thanks. This is... Oh, thanks. <laughs> we're leaving tomorrow. Oh. We? We. We're driving together, but we're not sleeping together. Yeah, we're not sleeping together. Got that? Got it. I don't get it. Got it. Yeah, I'm serious, Austin. So am I. Is that your sincere face? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of bummed, though. No ghosts. Myth busted. Yeah, it was fun. And we still have the matinee. Yeah. Anybody up for breakfast? Ooh, yes. bacon and scrambled eggs sound really good to me right now. Oh. <laughs> Although I would kill for some flapjacks. Ooh. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle thing, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. No, no way. way! So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore me.